Hello everyone, my name is Michael Fox, and I'd like to welcome you to the Let's Play Bastion video series. Uh, this is the first video of many. Um, Bastion is a newer game, uh, available on the Xbox Live Arcade and Steam as well. It's developed by Supergiant Games, and it is their first release, but uh, don't let that sway you from, uh, from playing it. It's an excellent game, and that's exactly the reason why... I've decided to do this let's play so um, I've already beaten it but I'm gonna do a fresh fresh story you know clean slate for this let's play and uh, we're gonna try and get as much stuff done as possible do as, as many things as we can reasonably and we're gonna have fun because it's really a fantastical game you're gonna love it so let's get going Proper story is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. He gets up, sets off for the bastion, where everyone agreed to go in case of trouble. Ground forms up under his feet as it pointing the way. He don't stop to wonder why. Finds his lifelong friend, just lying in the road. Well, it's a touching reunion. He sees what's left of the ripped walls. Years of work undone in an instant. In the calamity. That a survivor? No, ma'am. It's a gas fella, forced out from underground. It pops him good. Fella got a piece of him though. Kid just rages for a while. Damn right. I rage all the time. That's all I do. Actually, there's, there's a lot of that in this video game. But it's good though. Peter falls out of the sky. Ain't a gift from the gods, but it'll have to do. So, two types of weapons in this game, really. Melee and, and range. Sometimes there's a combination of both. You'll see that uh, in the future. Um, a good, good, uh, concise selection of, of weapons, though. Kid's worked up quite a thirst by now, so that fountain looks real inviting. Sometimes you just need a drink. A school of squirts tunnels up around him. Must have fled here from the mines. Can't help but think, and you know, this is any time I play a game, but squirts, I automatically think very sexual. Um, and there are other enemies with sexual, you know, kind of names. He finds a memento from a girl he knew. Always used to fancy her. Um, inventory is pretty simple, and sometimes it even includes things that aren't necessarily items you can use, but more of uh, talking points later in the game or to progress the story. So it's kind of interesting, actually. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll get more into that as we go deeper into the game. Um, that's kind of uh, a very good trial, that little bit there. Kind of gets you used to the controls pretty quickly, and, and there'll be more sort of tutorial type stuff for the he first little while. Inside one of Selandia's famous watering holes. Inside's old Rondi, the bartender. The calamity got him before his drinking did. Then Kid finds his trusty shield. The security takes him for a petty thief. Ah. Special delivery. Gas fellas. Using the shield in this game. 
pretty important. Start turning up the last call. I uh, underestimated its importance my first playthrough, but after you know towards the end, I became pretty proficient with it, and More it just words start coming out of the woodwork. makes your life so much easier. So much easier. Oh, obviously I'm not Big old fella pops out in front of the kid. Not doing very well here, but I, I I do get better, trust me. Trust me on this. Um Evading A is very very simple, very easy. Another pivotal pivotal thing in this game. You're constantly the kid sees the weight of the bastion out the window. Uh, it's a bit of a drop. Constantly jumping around and you don't want to sit still otherwise you're gonna get killed as well it's pretty uh, it's called dynamic narration in this game it kind of it activates once you reach certain uh, spots on a level or area uh, of a level so that's kind of cool and actually you wouldn't know you don't really he realize a good it look at things on his way down it's it's a pretty smooth he lands on top of a breaker's bow and it ain't broke. Narration. But it makes it difficult for me to talk. Because I don't want to interrupt him when he starts talking. Yeah. Kid spies a good perch for some target practice. He knows he should draw the string all the way back. This is another version of a ranged weapon. Obviously you saw the, the gun we had earlier. Um, this bow and arrow. Kicking it old school. Very useful though, and uh, you definitely want to pull the sh string back longer. It makes it more powerful. The kid pockets a memento more from accurate. Breaker, once the fastest man in the land. Uh, you see there something stringy. You're gonna see a lot of those items that start with the word something and then uh, an adjective after that, and those are just items that you use to upgrade the weapons. So there's a special one for each type of weapon. Uh, just right back at you. Very unbelievably the useful. The emergency defenses still work. Bad news is they aiming for the kid. Is is blocking or countering? And it's not like you just block and you automatically counter. You have to do it. It's kind of time sensitive, right? So blocking, pulling up your shield at the right time, will do a counter, which damages the the enemy up a few pointers from a dusty old tone. Here we're picking up our first spell. He's a mighty fast learner. You can use your skill. I think they call them they call them skills. A skill, basically each <clears throat> item has a, a few skills. You can only use one at a time though. And you can't change them on the fly. You have to go to to an arsenal. Which I don't want to spoil too much. We'll see we'll see an arsenal later. And that's where you can change your items or your weapons around and your the skill that you're using. This skill is very useful, uh, but they require the black tonic. He that finds you, the distillery uh, right next to the arsenal. That you, Tough part of town. The, the black tonic, sorry he interrupted me, that you see up uh, by your health bar. And this is an arsenal that I was talking about. One sip of the spirits in that distillery and the kid will feel like a new man. Distilleries are awesome as well. Um, basically... Each one of those slots uh, correlates to what level you are. So once you get to level two, you open up the level two slot, and basically you can just put in a uh, uh, a potion, and they all have awesome names: Fetching Fizz, Dread Rum, Squirt Cider. Oh, I love me some Squirt Cider, and uh, and they all do different things. So the Fetching the Fizz, where the kid can pick the best tools for the job. Um, Fetching Fizz helps you pick up a lot of those collectibles that you would otherwise miss um, if you didn't get too close. So it's for lazy people. And again, here the arsenal, you can pick. You have two items or two two weapons to use. So I usually like to go with something kind of melee, something kind of ranged, because you you need a bit of both. And um, you know skills. Sometimes you like to mix it up, sometimes there's specific skills that work really well for certain enemies, but uh, 
we're kind of limited at this early stage in the game so sticking with whirlwind because it's a it's a sweet close close range skill kind of like um, uh, barbarian if you've ever played Some Diablo 2 squirts, birthing like crazy in a couple of corn bins. and this game definitely I mean to me what I think of it is it's kind of like a mashup between like a Zelda and Diablo I know those were two kind of influences for some of the, the people on the, the for behind the development team um, and you can kind of see a, a lot of it that one was more the two in this Most game the kid good manners mechanics of, of Diablo 2 you know just in kind of little tidbits there here and there and same with the, the kind of more vibrant nature of the game the reminds me of since the kid on his way of uh, of Zelda the bastion's real close now this is one of the instances where you, you can see that having a ranged weapon definitely comes in handy. Otherwise, uh, even more effective is really just focusing on, on countering. Because uh, that's a, a one-hit kill for these, uh, what, what are we calling them, sentries or something like that. They're quite annoying if you don't pay attention to them. Uh, so it's best to best to clear those guys I find get them out of the way early but once you get better and you're more able to manage you can use them to your advantage because what I really love about Bastion is that enemies can hurt each other right and they don't go out of their way to avoid it right if an enemy walks in front of one of those little plasma cannonball things they get hit just the same as, as you would, so you can actually use that to your advantage, kind of lure them in front of the path of that, or even some other enemy who's winding alloy, winding up for a hit. And spoiled blueberries fills the air. Uh, again, you can see there we have something heavy, and those, that item is used to upgrade our, our, our giant hammer. Kid maybe shouldn't have done what he just did. Scumbags are actually true scumbags, and I say that because they have those droopy kind of sad eyes, and you're just like, oh, dude just wants a friend, but really they just want to puke on you, and that puke hurts too. You don't want to step in that stuff. It's probably like very acidic, I'm sure. But uh, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of blue Kool-Aid or something like that, so I kind of want to drink it. And that huge mamma jamma, um, you need to watch out for them. And you need to kill them quickly too, because as you can see, he's just pummeling the ground and they put holes in it. And you can fall through those holes. It doesn't kill you unless you're dangerously low in health. Uh, but it does hurt falling to your death, which you'll see me do lots. So you want to get rid of them just as quick as possible so that they stop damaging the environment and making it hell while you're trying to dodge the million other squirts and scumbags roaming around he finds the core to the wharf district he steals the city's heart might as well all right now comes now comes the fun cores we're looking for cores um the place is starting to fall that's, that's the main thing we're collecting. Most levels have cores. So core kid took was the only thing making this particular rock stay um, And you, you hear him blabbing about it just keeps running. being what was keeping this place stable. Some assault like crazy. Um, but anyways, the core is required to help restore the bastion. Which... Um, At last, the skyway trying to think inside. how many cores are there. There's a few cores anyways. So... You'll, you'll see in a very soon. To go. So now that's the, we're heading back to the Bastion. And uh, usually, usually right when you get a core, things get pretty hectic on levels or you have to fight some sort of boss or it just gets really now difficult. Now the kid sees something stranger still. His mind races. 
Did anybody else survive? Sure enough, he finds another. He finds me. Oh my god. We talk for a spell. See, here you can... Oh, I'll just let him talk. Cause... There's a bit of the Bastion's power in that crest. Enough to point the way to the cores. All I tell him is to set that core of his on the monument there. Then watch. I try to let the kid down gently. This is the Bastion, all right. Except no one else showed up. So you can see those items we collected, they act as, as talking points. Um, kind of cool, it helps you develop the story Kid a little bit more. And, here yet. and uh, I don't know, it just makes you feel like there's a little bit of history behind the, behind it. And it's just interesting, so. Anyways, you, that's where you set the core. Just like that, the Bastion comes alive. Oh my god. It starts growing again, growing stronger. Miracle feed. Kid's gotta put its power to good use. Now the Bastion can send him even farther into the wild unknown. Oh, heck yes. So that's one core. Each core we add helps improve it even more. And with each one, we also get to build, what to build. A, a building. And you get usually you get a choice. So distillery or arsenal. Uh, I'm going to go with arsenal, probably. Mm, yeah. It's just good to be able to the change a place of peace, change we all your uh, if we have to. items and or weapons. I keep calling them items. Anyways, uh, that's going to be it for this video, guys. So I'll catch you in part two. Please come back because things are going to really start getting exciting. Anyways, peace out.